the FBI in peace and war. Tonight's story, no insurance. Here we are, Mr. Bailey. Room 1012. Thank you. A half hour, Dr. Walter said. Will you tell Mr. Shepard? I will, nurse. Thank you. Uh, just ring if you want anything. All right. Of course, what we want to know... Oh, come on in, Frank. Uh-huh. Draw up a chair. Mr. Davis has decided he wants to tell us the whole story. Oh, good. How are you feeling today, Davis? Oh, good boy. The nurse said you're coming along fine. She also said we only had a half hour, Shepard. I think that should be enough. What about the DA? On his way over. With Doc Judson? Judson and Miss Redding both. What? She, she's coming here with Doc Red? You don't want to see her, Davis? Don't I? Listen, I want to see the both of them. Mr. Doyle wanted them to hear what you had to tell us, well, too. They'll hear. Don't you worry. They'll hear plenty, boy. I'm afraid we can't wait, Shep. I suppose you start in, Davis. Okay. Where, where do you want me to begin? Let's begin any place, in your own words. Okay. Uh, how about a, c- a cigarette first? Huh? Hey, uh. Light? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's better. Well, now, let's see. Uh, y- you want to take it from when the doc first came to see Red and me, huh? The doc? Uh, yeah, yeah, Dr. Judson. Mm. Uh, he-, he came to see the redhead and me when I dropped in to see her between shows. I always used to drop in on Red between shows, you know? Go on. Yeah. Well, uh, like I say, Red and me were seeing a little of each other in those days. Yeah. Now, now that I think of it, that alone should have made me suspicious. Yeah. Know what I mean? I think so. Yeah. Well, Red, she always used to give me the cold shoulder, and then all of a sudden, like she, she didn't. You see? Yeah, I see. Yeah. Well, any, anyway, this particular evening when I dropped in to see her, she told me she had a guest coming, a, a doctor, you know. And she also told me she had a little proposition for me. And while we were waiting for the doc, she gave me the rundown. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, this nightclub act I do is a scream. I'm a regular one man riot, you know. But the trouble is, there, there ain't too many people agree with me. And the fact is, I wasn't doing too good along the pay envelope line, you know what I mean? And, so anyway, when Red come along with this proposition, that sort of fitted in with my talent. How could I say no? I said, sure, what am I loaded? I'm interested. And by the time the doc arrived, my mouth was practically water. Hello, Doc. How are you? I'm all right, Red. I'm okay. That's good. Come on in, Troy. Cut on the sofa. Yeah, sure. Doc, I want you to meet the fellow I was telling you about. This is Mr. Murray Davis. Murray... Doc Judson. Yeah, pleased to meet you, Doc. How do you do, Mr. Davis? Take a load off your feet, Doc, and call the little man Murray. Now, this Mr. Davis stuff, he's not used to it. Drink? Uh, no thanks. Can't stay long. Okay. Murray's got to get back for his midnight show anyway, so we'll make it fast. Oh, you're in show business, Mr. Uh, Murray? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I got he a little... He has a pratfall routine at the Hello Club over in Jersey. Oh, you're a comedian. Yeah, he calls it that. Hey, listen now. Okay, you... honey, okay. Well, Doc, you got something lined up? Uh-huh. Here's the license number. Red, he keeps his car parked at the Fenway Garage, 60th Street, near Lexington. Okay. How much insurance do you carry? Fifteen hundred. Oh, fifty thousand, huh? Drive his own car? Uh-huh. He and his wife. That's good. How long has he been insured with you people? Last five years, as far as I could tell from company records. Never had an accident, either. So? Mm-hmm. Well, sounds like a good prospect, Doc. We'll go to work on it. Yes. Oh, uh, Red. Yeah? Does, uh... Murray here. Well, I've been telling him the routine. He's got it all straight, but maybe you'll give him the medical angle. Huh? Hey, look, do I get to screaming or anything like that there, Doc? Uh, no, I wouldn't in this case. Like I said, Murray, this is a small accident. All you're doing is pulling out of a parking space in this other car clips you. Maybe it just knocks off a fender. Oh. And I get internal injuries out of that? No, 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 Murray. The injury develops after the accident. Oh. Doc, here's some little develop. Yeah, well, okay, you're the boss, so I don't get screaming. No, as soon as the other car hits your car, just slump forward over the wheel. When the crowd collects, get out of the car as if you were dazed. Indicate some pain, but not too much. He means moan a little, groan a little, but come off quick. Yeah, sure, I get it. I get now, the important thing is to insist you're able to go home alone. Get a taxi and get out of there fast before some fool calls an ambulance. You told him that. Go home, go right to bed, and stay there. A couple of days, hand up. Uh-huh. By that time, the accident will be reported to the company, and the adjuster will call me in to visit you. And the rest is a cinch. Doc fakes a few x-rays, recites a little medical double talk, and we take his company for 10,000 damages. Then? Yeah, sure. Down and out comic, can't work anymore, object to charity, all that. We set a lot of court for 10. Oh, that sounds wonderful, Red. I, I just hope it comes off all right. Don't you worry, honey. When the doc and me fix up an accident, it comes off all right. Yes, 
Yes, sir. Red and Doc, they had the whole thing worked out to the last detail. And, and, and Red meant what she said, what she told me would come off all right. First, she lined up a signal man. Okay, now, Joe, you got the routine. You watch the Fenway garage. When you spot a red Cadillac, license Y2426, you give me the signal. First the signal man, then an on the spot I witness. You got a straight sin? All you gotta do is keep saying it was that guy's fault. I saw him run right into this man's car. I seen the whole thing. Signal man, eyewitness, and finally a loudmouth dame to yell for the cops. Everything was set and it all looked good. So we get hold of the secondhand Chevy, park it at the curb, and we're all set to go. You nervous, man? No, no, I'm, I'm okay, but I, I would just as soon get this over. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, what time it is? Ten. Oh. I, I thought Joe said the guy's wife usually took the car out about ten. Yeah, that's right. You got plenty of room to pull your front wheels out there? Oh, sure, sure. It's just ten? Mm. Now, remember, when I say step on it, cut hard to your left. Yeah, yeah, I know all that. Yeah, you do. Now, you better start your motor. Joe, just give me the signal. Why? Start your motor. Oh, yeah, sure. I'd right, a little fast. Yeah, all right, all right. Okay, I'm not watching you now. I'm watching in back. Yeah, I'm set. Cadillac's coming out of the garage now. Okay. Turning into the street. Getting the gear. Yeah, yeah. Coming down the street. Keep your hands on the wheel to cut hard left. Wife's driving. Yeah, all right. Here she comes. I'm a little faster. Just getting closer. Wait now. Wait. Okay, step on. Well, now stand back, everybody. Stand back. All right, now step aside. Step aside. Miss. Miss, he hurt. Honey, speak to me. Honey, speak to Sugar. What's to speak? I guess I'm all right, officer. Just get us a taxi, please. I'd like to go home. Yes, sir. Come off perfect. One, two, three. The cop got us a taxi for home, and after that, there was nothing to do but wait for Doc and the adjuster from the insurance company. Murray? Yeah. These two gentlemen are from the insurance company. Do you feel well enough to talk to them? Yeah, I think so. Sit down, huh? I'm uh, Dr. Judson, Mr. Davis, and this is the chief adjuster for our company, Mr. Emery. Oh, sit down, please. We won't keep you long, Mr. Davis. I just want to ask a few questions. Uh, May I have your full name and occupation, please? Uh, Murray Arthur Davis. I'm an actor. Murray Arthur Davis. Occupation, actor... Arthur Davis. Occupation, actor. Uh, two R's in Murray, Mr. Emery? That's right. And now under question three, nature of injury, write in see attached report and x-rays and Dr. Judson's examination. See attached report. Oh. Hold it, Miss Snyder. Yes? Mr. Emery, there's a gentleman here to see you from the district attorney's office. Oh, send him in, please. Yes, sir. Uh, We'll fill in that form later, Miss Snyder. All right, Mr. Emery. Uh, Can I have the amount of the claim? Mr. Davis is asking for $20,000, and he'll probably settle for $10,000. Yes, sir. Uh, Come in. Uh, That's all, Miss Snyder. No calls for the next half hour. Yes, sir. Mr. Doyle, how are you? Hello, Emery. Meet Mr. Shepard and Mr. Bailey of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. How do you do, gentlemen? Mr. Emery, hope you don't mind our barging into the case like this. Well, not at all. I'll give you the quick version, Emery. Uh, sure. Sit down, gentlemen. Uh, sit down, please. Thanks. Well, things happened pretty fast after you sent me the inquiry on the Davis accident. They seem to have. We cross-checked his background with the federal files along with that Redding woman who was in the car with him. And the next thing I knew, Shepard and Bailey here were flying in from Washington. Uh, You're interested in Mr. Davis too, gentlemen. We're not sure yet. Maybe Norma Redding more than Davis. 
We'd like to hear what you know first. Well, it all boils down to one set of facts. We've had four unusual claims against the company in the last 18 months. In each case, the injured driver was driving an uninsured used car, and all four used cars were purchased at the same dealer. How do you like that, Chip? Sounds very promising. Right, Frank? Very. Of course, the chief adjuster's job is to be suspicious of everything. It might only be a coincidence. Yes, and it might be an organized gang that sets up cheap used cars for accidents. Right, Chip? Well, it might be a number of things, gentlemen. But from our inspection of Norma Redding's record, I'd still say it sounds very promising. Mr. Emery, do you think you could fix me up with a temporary job as an insurance adjuster? Well, I think that could be fixed, Mr. Shepard. Good, and the sooner it can, the better. I'd like to get to work on the Davis case at once. Hello, Red. This is Doc. Yeah, Doc. What's the trouble? Oh, no trouble, Red. None at all. Fact, it's good news. Yeah? Yeah, they've assigned a new adjuster to our case. An Ivy League character named Shepard. Well, it'll be like taking candy from a baby. Ten thousand worth of candy? You bet, Red. <laughs> okay, Doc. Murray will be ready for him. Send him over. Well, Mr. Davis, I'm glad we finally came to an agreement. I think 10000 is fair compensation for your injuries. Oh, thank you, Mr. Shepard. You've been very helpful. Murray, don't tire yourself talking, honey. Oh, that's all right, Norma. My fiancée spoils me, Mr. Shepard. You're lucky to have such a girl, Mr. Davis. I know. Everybody's been so wonderful to me. Everybody's... Murray, Murray, darling. Doctor. Yes, I was afraid this would happen. Everybody's so wonderful. This financial talk has been too much of a strain. Mr. Davis, you must try to relax. So wonderful. Even when the doctor told me I'd never do my act again. Murray, don't talk like that. Yes, I'm sorry, Norma. Mr. Shepard, you'll excuse me. Of course, Mr. Davis. Goodbye, Mr. Shepard. Thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Davis. You'll be hearing from us soon. Doctor, I'm going to give him a sedative. I'll see you back at the office, Shepard. Right. Goodbye, Miss Redding. Goodbye, Mr. Shepard. <laughs> sedative? Somebody better give me a drink and quick or I'll stop boiling the kid. <laughs> okay, honey, you deserve one. Yeah. Murray, that was a magnificent performance. Yeah, I did good, huh? Yeah, too good. I was afraid for a minute you didn't know where to stop. Well, with my stage experience, everybody's been so wonderful hey, to me. Hey. Poor, poor Murray. He'll never prat fall again. Never. All right, I'll write you with friends. Here's hey. a drink. Hey. Hey, hey Doc, how, how soon will they pay the 10000 eh? Huh? Well, it takes a couple of weeks. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, folks, what am I drinking to? How about a quick one for the college boy from the insurance company, that nice Mr. Shepard? Okay. The Ivy League it is. Uh, to Mr. William Shepard. And what he don't know won't hurt him. Yes, come in, Frank. Thanks. I missed anything? No, I just finished reading Judson's report. You got something? Maybe, but I'll get to that in a minute. Don't let me interrupt. Uh, Sheb. Uh huh. What sort of fellow is this, Dr. Judson? Competent, perhaps a little too smooth. I had to talk with him before I saw Davis. He told me that he'd given them a thorough examination and we'd be lucky to settle for half of Davis's claim. So? So he agreed to settle. There's only one thing that bothers me. Yeah? Judson said the same thing in those other four cases. What do you think? Paul, it's our policy never to think anything until we can prove it. That's why I asked Frank to do a little research. I see. Well, what about it, Frank? Well, you can decide for yourselves. During the last 24 hours following Shep's visit to Davis, he won... Went to the movies, apparently unaffected by his severe injuries. Two, dined and danced with our friend Norma Redding. And three, shot two games of billiards in a Third Avenue pool room. Pretty much activity for a man as badly damaged as Dr. Judson insists. All right, what do we do about it? I have an idea, Paul, and with a go-ahead from you, Frank and I will go to work on it. Okay, you have it. Thanks. Now, there's an old saying I just made up, Paul. If you can't see in the dark, it's a good idea to turn on the light. Anyway, we'll give it a try and find out. Hello? Red, this is Doc. Yeah, Doc. Money come through yet? 
But something else came through. Red, I've got to see you right away. Why, what is it? I don't want to say on the phone. Just stay at your place. I'll be right over. Go on, go on. What else? What else? Well, isn't that enough? Shepard's convinced Murray's faking and he's calling in a specialist. You're letting him do it? Well, how can I stop him? He has Emery's permission. You showed him the x-rays, didn't you? Well, of course I did. But he says they could be faked. That Murray could be working through someone in the lab who agreed to substitute plates. This is cute. This is real cute. Yeah, you're telling me. Ivy League character, huh? Like taking candy from a baby. You're a hot one, you are. Well, how was I to know? These new adjusters, they're out to make a record for themselves. Doc. Yeah? That specialist takes new pictures of Murray. There's no insurance this whole thing don't bust wide open. You can say that again. He gets sent up for years. You'll never practice medicine again. Tell me something new, will you? Unless, of course, the pictures he takes show the same thing yours do. What? One of those phony x-rays you substituted show, Doc. Broken ribs. Hey, now Broken listen, ribs, Red. Huh? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? You're not suggesting... Of course I am. What's the matter with it? Well, you mean... I that... mean, if you don't want to go to jail, you come up with a better idea. Well, but I... Listen, Doc, I don't know about you, but I'm not falling apart just because a new adjuster smells a rat. If the phony pictures show Murray has some broken ribs, and broken ribs is what he's going to have. Well, we, we couldn't do a thing like that, Red. Why couldn't we? Well, I don't know. It isn't exactly ethical. When there's no insurance, you've got to make your own ethics. Red, I don't like it. Who likes it? Just get on the phone and tell Murray you're coming over to see him tonight. Well... I'm telling you, Doc, it's the only way. Yeah, but Murray isn't going to be happy. You do it or I will. Oh, Red. I mean it, Doc. I'm not ending up behind bars on account of a couple of cracked ribs. Now, either you take care of Murray or I will. <laughs> And when the doc called me that night to say he was on his way over, I had no idea what was coming. He brought a bottle and we just sat around drinking. I, I, I thought maybe I was getting drunk. I, I never got wise to the knockout drops. Anyway, jo doc just kept looking at me and talked pouring out another. Uh, here you are, Murray. Down the hatch. <clears throat> I don't, I don't know, Doc. Maybe I had enough. Oh, last one, last one. Okay. Holy, well, this stuff fits you like a ton of bricks, you know? You, you sure it's good stuff, Doc? Five ninety a bottle. Yeah. Now, what time is it? I, I thought you said Red was coming over. Well, she should be here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure going to love it when, when we see the color of that money, Doc. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 not at all. What are you so jumpy about? Nothing, nothing really. Yeah. You know, Doc, you ought to take something for those nerves. <coughs> What's the matter, Murray? <laughs> I don't know. I told you, this stuff really hit me. <laughs> uh, that's red. Uh, I'll get it. Yeah, yeah will you, Doc? Hello, Red. Hi, Red, come on in. Huh? Thanks, Murray. Doc? Yes, Red, I did. Okay. Murray, how are you? <laughs> I'll tell you better in a minute. Hey, Doc, Doc, you just get me fired. Well, just because you haven't had dinner yet, Murray. Doc. Yes? You didn't tell him yet? Well, no. Tell I... me. Tell me what? Murray, we got trouble. Lots of trouble. Maybe 20 years in jail for all of us. What? 20 years, maybe more. And you're the only one can pull us out. Me? Mm-hmm. The doc here underestimated that Shepard fellow from the insurance company. It seems it isn't Mr. Shepard who's simple-minded. It's the doc. Oh, now, Take listen, Take it easy, Ray. doc. Well, I don't see I'm that... I'm coming to it. No. What's the matter, Murray? Ah, uh, I feel a little peculiar. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm all right. Well, you see, Murray... Shepard thinks that you've been faking, and he's called in a specialist to examine you, take new x-rays. Oh. Naturally, any new x-rays would fail to show those busted rips. Am I right, Doc? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, Mr. Shepard would have all the confirmation he needs. Oh, we, we are in trouble. But I still don't see... We're coming to that. 
You tell him, Doc. Murray, if we want to stay out of trouble, we got to make those new x-rays show three broken ribs. Well, how? Fred? How do you think, Murray? What? We got to break three of your ribs. What? Well, now, it's not as bad as it sounds, Murray. With a stiff hypodermic, you won't feel a thing. Well, what are you two kidding me or something? Murray, you always told me you'd do anything for me. Now's your chance. Come on, get out of here. Come on, both of you. Get out of here. It's all right, Red. That stuff will take effect any second. What? What stuff? The stiff hypodermic, Murray. You've been drinking it for the last half hour. What? Why, you lost... Don't, don't fight it, Murray. It's too late for that. Oh. The room is spinning. Just take it easy, like the doc says. All right. Don't. Don't do this to me. Doc? Yeah, he's out cold. Okay. Guess we'd better go to work on him. When I woke up, I found FBI agents in the room with me. Well, I, I guess you know the rest. Yes, we do. The FBI had you under steady surveillance, Davis. You and Dr. Judson both. And now that the doctor and Miss Redding are here, I don't think they're going to have as much to say as they thought. Is that so? Let me handle this, Miss Redding. And you're wrong, Mr. Bailey. We're going to have plenty to say. Really? You don't expect anyone's actually going to believe the rantings of this, this madman, do you? Uh, not just a minute. It's all right, Davis. Let him go on. It's his word or mine, Mr. Doyle. And I'll have backing for my word any time new x-rays are taken. Just remember that. They'll show the same broken ribs as the original picture. Oh, they will. I'm sure of that. Well, then... They'll show the same broken ribs. And they'll also show something else. I beg your pardon? We've already taken new x-rays, Judson. Would you care to see them? You've already taken them. That's right. Here, see for yourself. They show a remarkable medical phenomenon. What? A really remarkable phenomenon. In the first set of pictures, the original x-rays, Mr. Davis's lumbar region was perfectly normal. However, in the set we took, by some strange miracle of science, Mr. Davis's lumbar region shows a pronounced scoliosis. A what? Scoliosis. Curvature of the spine, Miss Redding. Why... Well, that's impossible. Impossible, but there it is in the pictures. Doc. Yeah, I'm sorry, folks. I plump forgot to tell you all about my dead lumber. You shut up, you. Mr. Shepard and gentlemen, you I... You made would... a mistake, Judson, a very costly mistake. But why not be philosophical about it? After all, accidents do happen. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Confronted by the incontrovertible evidence of X-ray plates, in addition to Murray Davis's complete statement, Doc Judson had no choice but to admit his part in the racket. And in spite of all efforts to clear, him, clear herself, Norma Redding was included with him in the subsequent indictment. Both were brought to trial, found guilty, and sentenced to long terms in prison, Judson suffering the additional penalty of being barred from medical practice anywhere in the United States. Murray Davis though aiding the prosecution enormously through his testimony, nevertheless was given a light sentence. With his confinement, our files were closed on an accident victim who was paid off with broken ribs, a term in jail, and no insurance. State Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.